starry sky. It's really nice to have dreams like that. Ah, well. I guess it'll do. That's a bit out of nowhere. No, um, I've always wanted to write stories together with someone. So, being in this club is, um, really important to me. <laughs> I hardly did anything either. Either way, with my little episode complete and Yugi's story still underway, gathering at the library to review our stories became a routine of sorts. It was during one such a day, the following occurred. Today, Yumi was having one of her more normal days, as in her sister was nowhere to be seen and to your average person, this girl would have looked like any high school girl. That's when I noticed it. I had already become an existence outside the normal world, just by being around these two. Since if I were to believe her, then I'd be witnessing telepathy, the existence of the spiritual realm, or something along those lines in action, pretty much on a daily basis. Well, I guess I wanted to believe Yumi and her story on Yuki, but still, this being reality and not the world of fairy tales, stuff like that just wasn't supposed to exist. Yeah, but it's not easy thing to change like whole character, right? While I thought of all this, Yumi herself was writing her part of the newsletter. Unlike Yuki, she was writing straight on paper with very little hesitation. What would a girl like her write about anyways? Hey! No peeking! Eh? It's none of your business what I'm writing. Well, that kind of figures. Nah, actually, I was only kidding. But it's kind of boring when you're hardly even curious. Well, sorry for not meeting your expectations. So, what's the story about? Here, let me show you. It turned out to be a story of a girl who suddenly found out that she could actually read other people's minds. <laughs> Maybe she can. At first she was excited, but eventually she ends up finding out that her crush was actually a huge pervert and at least half the class are complete idiots. As a writer, she was probably at least as good as her sister, which was pretty surprising by itself. I want to read that story. But while the newsletter was coming along nicely, there was another sort of trouble headed my way, as I would find out soon enough. That's two stories out of three. Do you think the one from Yuki will be ready soon? Aren't you supposed to know that better? But I think she's been a lot more brighter lately. Well, I guess it does look like that, since it seemed like her story was at least coming along nicely. You think it's just that, huh? She glanced at my direction while showing her trademark, that mischievous grin which meant that she was up to no good again. Hey, what would you say about a date? Well, that came out of nowhere. But wait, a date with Yumi? Eh? Well, what's with that look? I was talking about Yuki. Don't tell me you actually wanted to go with me instead. Exactly. <laughs> In your dreams. And moreover, do you really think you can decide stuff like that for her? Since asking for a date completely out of the blue was apparently normal for her, I guess I should expect anything. But, as regrettable as it is, I'm not sure if Yuki would feel the same. It's times like these when I really hate my rational personality. Hey, it's Yuki we're talking about. Do you really think she would make the move herself? She had a point. Even in an extra convenient hypothetical setting where Yuki would actually like me, I just couldn't see her making a move of any sort. In the end, I'm not all that sure if she would have the courage to speak about it even to her sister. But still. Anyway, you're fine with next Sunday, right? See ya for now, I'm off! <laughs> hey, I didn't even answer yet! Yes, you did. 
But there was no one to hear that, since she had oh, already been stopped. Oh, I was very close, yes. This Sorry, man. I got myself into this time. <laughs> Sunday came quickly, and so I found myself waiting for Yuki at the main street of this little town. There wasn't really a meeting place or a town square here, so in the end, we had agreed to meet in front of the movie theater. If you wanted to see the latest blockbusters, you'd have to take the train to the next town. On the other hand, this theater was small, with only one hall where they'd often run some old foreign films I had never heard of. The movie we were seeing today had been picked for us, courtesy of Yumi. Romantic films are the basics of any date, she said. In other words, she probably didn't know the movie either. <laughs> he should use this man voice more. <laughs> either way, I was waiting, and I had been waiting for a good ten minutes already. If it turns out Yumi had only played a prank on me, I'll be damned. But as soon as I thought of that, she finally arrived. Yuki was wearing a light blue one-piece dress that was just the right length to please the eye, while it still had a sense of purity to it. Judging from the slight blushing on her face, it might have been that Yumi had even went out of her way to pick that dress for her. Good job, Yumi! Of course, I didn't say any of that out loud. But still, this whole deal was so good, I wanted to yell at the top of my lungs and do a huge fist pump in the air right then and there! Um, sorry. I'm a little bit late. I hope you didn't have to wait too long. Nah, no problem. And by the way, that dress looks great on you. How do you flirt casually without seeming like a huge pervert? I don't think I've ever really understood this much. <laughs> While I kept thinking of that, the two of us bought the tickets to the movie whose title didn't really matter and picked our seats from the nearly empty hall. Mm -hmm. By the two of us, you mean you bought them. I really the movie that. itself turned out to be a black and white film about an unlikely couple on their way out of the country, headed for nowhere in particular just to get away from their own lives. Not that I could have been asked to pay much attention to the film itself, anyway. Afterwards, we picked a table from the local family restaurant. I was studying the menu half-heartedly when I noticed something was off. Yuki had actually taken a seat right next to me, something I never would have expected. Since the seats were basically just couches around a table, the two of us were suddenly only a few centimeters away from each other. She stared at me with a look that was somehow full of expectation. Are you ready to take your order? The atmosphere was broken up by the words of the waitress. You could hear a bit uh. of irritation in her voice, but I guess you really couldn't blame her in a situation like that. Bad voice. I used a bad voice. After acquiring a milk coffee for myself and a fruit parfait for Yuki, the conversation shifted towards the movie from earlier. So, how was the film then? That? Um, the one I actually wanted to see had been running on a weekday. Ah, uh, hey, want a taste? She was offering me a spoonful of her fruit parfait. Again, I had no idea Yuki could be this forward. But, in a situation like this, it's not like I could have refused, either. I smiled like an idiot while enjoying the sweet taste <laughs> in my mouth. As there was still time, the two of us did all the stuff that couples on a date usually do. Bull around at the arcade, shop for a bit, and finally, we somehow wandered to the nearby park. Well, calling it a park would have been generous, as there were only a few benches, plus a swing set and a slide. Normally, parents would bring their kids to play here, but at this time of day, it was all empty for some reason. Oh my god, my knee hurts. We picked one of the benches at random and sat down. While I was racking my mind in need of some good lines, Yuki was already ahead of me. Um, thank you, again, for today. I don't mention it. She leaned closer to me. Again, with her eyes full of expectation. Well, even I could read the situation from this much, but still. Just case her, you idiot. Yes. I closed my eyes, since I had heard that's what you're supposed to do in this sort of situation. 
We're just kind of just going. But she was a lot more sudden than what I had thought. The feeling on my lips was warm and soft tone. It left me wanting another, but that would have probably been too much. Afterward, neither of us knew what to say. I guess it must have been fairly embarrassing for her as well. Yuki, I guess you're pretty forward, actually. Um, it seems like so. I didn't even know it myself. It all became a bit weird somehow. Maybe we should call it a day. Uh, sorry about that. I'll walk you home then. Uh, um, there's no need for that. I'll see you tomorrow at school. Bye. <laughs> Bye? I hadn't known Yuki for all that long, but there had definitely been something weird about her today. But what exactly it was? I wasn't going to ruin my Cloud Nine mood by pondering something like that. Things would work themselves out, somehow. <laughs> the next day at school, just before morning class, I met Yumi again, the mastermind behind yesterday's operation. I should probably thank her. After all, things worked out a lot better than what I had expected. Morning! Still in high spirits? It sure looked like you were having fun yesterday. <laughs> Crap! I forgot that she was also watching the whole thing, since Yuki and her share their senses as well. While it looks like she's on my side right now, I'd still rather not let her see that idiotic smirk I had on my face for the whole of the date. I guess that's true. But you do realize that was my first kiss as well. Just how are you going to compensate for that? God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> what is going on? Just what am I supposed to say here? It wasn't like I couldn't take it back anymore. And I'm pretty sure I wouldn't even if I had the chance. Still, it didn't really seem like she was too serious about it either. Sorry, but I'm not taking it back, no matter how nicely you'd ask. <laughs> she will kick your ass! Hmm, is that so? She looked at me with a mischievous smirk on her face. Still, thinking back to yesterday, there was one thing that wouldn't stop bugging me. By the way, Yuki was acting a bit unlike herself that whole day. Have you noticed anything like that about her? only care about her I didn't know the reason but she looked absolutely furious <laughs> oh crap she's in the class well. wasn't about to begin she would have probably bolted straight out the door or worse but as she had no choice her dagger like stare would be drilling a giant hole to my back for the next few hours so, you can understand just how relieved I was when she had disappeared off to somewhere by lunch break. Maybe I could find Yuki reading in the school library right now. Hopefully, she could tell me what was actually going on. I checked the library, but my search was in vain as Yuki was nowhere to be seen. Usually she'd be here, reading some thick hardcover or scribbling in her notebook. Was she actually avoiding me, or was I just thinking about it all too much? After all that, Yumi never turned up for afternoon class, leaving me even more confused than what I already was. Left without a choice, I decided to stop by the library one more time after school. I wasn't really expecting too much at this point, so I was even more surprised to see someone who I certainly had not expected to be here. Yumi was sitting at one of the tables. Apparently, she had been waiting for me. The entire library seemed empty which made the atmosphere even more heavier than what it already was. It looks like you were expecting someone else. I waited for her to speak, as her expression seemed somehow apologetic. You could tell that she probably had something on her heart. Haru, during that date, I... I was myself that entire time. Eh. Uh. Eh. Uh. Oh, alright. Mm. Yuki had nothing to do with the idea from the beginning, and I... I just feel so terrible for going that far. 
that are you serious right now? I lied to her and I lied to you. She was at the verge of tears, but as I thought of what she said, the little things that had been bugging me all along suddenly made sense. But what was I supposed to think right now? I felt terrible for mistaking her as Yuki, but rather than being cheated, I was mad at myself for letting this happen. This isn't me. This isn't how it was supposed to be. I did this for Yuki's sake. So, just what am I supposed to do about these feelings? I knew what she was trying to say, even though she couldn't put it to words. But I also knew I couldn't accept her feelings. It's not like I could suddenly change those of my own. And even if I did, that would only make her feel even more torn than what she already was. Please don't give me a bad end because of the choice on the bench. Knowing full well that I couldn't do a thing for her, I held her and said, I'm sorry, but Yuki also knows you did that for her sake, so she won't hate you for that. I know she's not like that. Sorry. Her hands pounded my chest as she cried. I kept repeating those meaningless words of apology, since I knew there wasn't anything else I could have said. Shame. After all that, I went home, walking like some broken robot, only dragging myself forward absent mindedly. Having finally made it back, I slumped down on my bed and just stared at the ceiling. Yumi, she actually likes me? No matter how I thought of it, I couldn't wrap my mind around that. No, neither of us simply had the right to feel that way. Actually, why not? I thought back to what I had said <clears throat> to her. How Yuki would really feel at the midst of all this? I couldn't even imagine. I had my hands full just trying to deal with my own feelings. I must have fallen asleep at some point, since there was no other way to explain all this. The entire scenery had changed, but I had a vague feeling that I had seen all this before. It was the mountain of wreckage, surrounded by the desolate wasteland, the same as Yuki's story. And it also turned out that I wasn't here alone. Haru? It was the first time I saw her after that date and hearing Yumi's confession. I still didn't know how I should feel, but since all of this was probably a dream, the answer came pretty easily. Huh? You're also here? Any idea why? No, but I kind of feel as if something or someone is calling me. Without saying another word, she headed forward. I tried to keep up as we made our way across the piles of mechanical junk. What we were headed towards seemed to be an opening of sorts. You could have called it a small cave, maybe, but what actually made up the walls of this cave were crushed mechanical parts. The said cave ended suddenly when we came into a hall-like space filled with various sorts of machinery. At the middle of it all, there was a huge glass sphere. Inside, you could There's see a the woman, I guess. girl, suspended in a transparent liquid of some sort. Was that girl her? And if that was the case, what was she doing here, wherever this was? Meanwhile, Yuki seemed to be looking for a way to release the girl locked inside the glass sphere, but there didn't seem to be any panels or levers around. In the end, it was nothing but improvisation, an honest guess. I grabbed a metal bar that happened to be lying on the ground and took a swing at the glass sphere. The sphere cracked open, and at the same time, it seemed like the entire structure of this cave was starting to crack into smaller pieces, like shards of glass. So, maybe that was a bad choice, man. The pieces broke down, there was a flash of whiteness, and the next thing I knew, I was lying on my bed again. Apparently, the dream had ended. Afterwards, I learned that Yuki had somehow woken up from her coma. Whether or not that dream had any connection to it would be anyone's guess.
Yes, that's good. But that's what I heard from Yumi, so I'll take her word for it. Everything was back to normal, but somehow I didn't feel as relieved as I maybe should have felt. It was a few days after the whole dream episode when all this happened. Yumi and I took the same bus to that hospital where Yuki was still recuperating from her coma. As for the conversation on the way... Uh, so how's Yuki? Eh? That's all you're going to ask? Apparently she had cheered up for a bit since last time, because she could already joke about this. But a gloomy Yumi would be much more creepy, so I guess I should be grateful for that. <laughs> fine then. How are you then? <laughs> Just fine. And Yuki's doing great too. It looks like she can actually remember some of the stuff that happened while we were, you know, together. How all that made any sense at all, I don't know. But that's just how it was. If someone else feels like tallying up the facts for me, feel free to do so. As for Yuki herself, she was still confined to a wheelchair, but at least she had been removed from the long-term care section to the recuperation ward. I guess that's some sort of an improvement, even if the hospital itself still seemed pretty bleak to me. While this was our first real meeting, and some sort of reunion as well, it was still pretty awkward seeing her after what had happened on that day. Uh, hi again, I guess? Haru? I'm sorry, about everything. No, um, everything turned out fine in the end. <laughs> I guess so. According to what I heard from Yumi, there would be some time before Yugi's life would return to normal. While I have a hard time realizing just how everything happened, and things between her and I are naturally a bit awkward, I'm still glad for her as a friend. As for Yumi... Just so you know, I still haven't given up. <laughs> eh? By the time I had opened my mouth to actually reply, she had already dashed off. I guess she's still the same as ever. And so, Never she had returned to normal. Or, as normal as they could really be. Still, it doesn't seem like my troubles are over, though. <sighs> Finito. Pretty cool story. We have two choices actually to be done. I've managed to get the wrong choice, but that's normal when it comes to my choices. I <coughs> the whole story is pretty good written. The problem is about the sounds here, I guess. The music is, uh, when it's uh, set to full, it's much, much louder than the voice of people. But you know, you can set this up in a good way. I hope it is in a good way right now. Uh, what's more? Well, sometimes the words written are different uh, and, uh, than the words spoken but it's not a problem I like that game I, that game, that visual novel very good project, Project Dualis it was worth playing for sure so hopefully you enjoyed see you in the next one, bye